Hello, my name is Anya Shah, and today we are going to create a page to view and watch lessons in a course in Bubble.io. The first thing I want to show you is the database. Right now we have the user object, which comes built in with Bubble. You can go ahead and add in extra things like a profile picture or name or even courses enrolled in, but right now I'm keeping it very simple. Here I have a course, and a course is composed of three things. Firstly is the name, which is quite intuitive. Next is students, which is just a list of users, so we know how many people are enrolled in this course. Lastly, we have the lessons of a course, which is a list of some of all of the videos in the course. If you can imagine a course, you might understand that there are further layers of organization, like modules or weeks or months split the courses split up into. For the sake of this video, I want to keep it very simple and bare bones. So I just have a list of videos associated with the course. But videos is actually a data type I created. And let's look at what this video is composed of. There are four different things. First is the name, which is again intuitive. Of course, a lesson in a course is going to have some sort of name associated. Next is our ID. I'm going to explain this a little more in a bit, but this is essentially what's going to allow us to play an actual video. Then we have watched. Now, watch seems like it would be a yes or no. Yes, this video is watched or no, it's not. But it's more complicated than that because there are different users who are watching the same video. This is why we set up watched to be a list of users. What this means is that on default, when a video is created, this list of users is going to be empty. There are no items in this list, which means no one has watched the video. As people start to watch the video, we add their username to this list. This allows us to keep a rolling list of all of the people who have watched the video and check if you've watched the video by seeing if your name is in the list. This will make a little more sense when we actually implement it. The last thing that is part of a video is the order. There are different ways to set this up, but just to keep it simple, I kept a number. You can imagine that a course has some sort of structure, a first video, the introduction, and a second video, third, fourth, and then the last video, which would maybe be a conclusion. In order to maintain this order and have an easy way to organize it, I just associated a number with each of these videos. Now, if you are building a whole course platform, there are a lot more steps that go in, like creating a place for someone to create a course and enroll in one. And maybe in the future, I'll create a video on that. Let me know in the comment section below if you would like me to. But right now, I really just want to focus on the one page of actually playing and watching a course, which is why I went ahead and just added some data directly into the database. I created a course called Zero to One Bubble, which I actually did, and you can check out at bit.ly slash zero to one bubble. But anyway, I went ahead and added three different videos to that course. And I set up the videos to have a name, ID, uh, number, and then no users having currently watched it. I also went ahead and added one student to this course, and that student is me. And you can run as so. Now, let's actually build the structure of this page. I am not going to focus on design, but I understand it's important for you to. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to focus mainly on functionality. There are a couple different components we need here. The first thing actually is going to be some sort of title to say what course we are currently watching. Next, we also need something to display all of the lessons in the course. And then lastly, we're going to need a group to hold the actual video screen which is going to be playing the video lesson. Now if you can imagine if you're building a course platform there would be multiple different courses that it could be. So in order to set this up effectively we need to have make it completely dynamic so you could change the course that is on this page and it would work with any course in the database. 
This is why on our actual page, we need to give it a type of content course. So we can change this accordingly. This means that it's going to store a course and everything on this page is going to be relating to the course that this actual page stores. Normally, when you navigate to this page, you would send over the course and I have a video on that if you would like to check it out. But just for the sake of this, I'm going to add a workflow to say when the page is loaded. And this is a handy trick for you to use when you're testing out your application. You're just going to go to our current page, which is called new page, and then send the first course in our database, which happens to be the only course in our database. This will just automatically populate this page with any random course. Now we can make all of this dynamic and say that we want to show the current page course's name as the title. Let's try out this much and see how it works. I'm going to make this a little longer. That's the issue that's happening here. But we can see load. We can see that over here we are storing the current page's course, which we have stored here, and just displaying its name. Now that we've figured out how to store the 0 to 1 courses, bubbles, courses, information on this page, we can make everything map to it. Let's tackle this repeating group where we want to show each of the lessons. If we're showing each of these lessons, this repeating group needs to be of type video. And its data source is going to be the current page's courses lessons. This is going to populate it with every video associated with this course. And I'm just going to drag a text box in here. And let's just display the current cell's video's name. Let's see what this looks like. Great, we have the title over here and each of the videos, introduction, visual elements, and style elements, which are the only three I had populated over here on the side. This is looking great. I'm going to now start setting up this side. We want to display a video, so under visual elements, I'm just going to drag this video screen up there. It's automatically a YouTube video. And here is video ID. So what does this mean? If I go to YouTube and choose any random video, up here we can see the URL. And all of this is standard throughout every video. The last part, V equals something, is the ID in question. This is going to help YouTube identify exactly which video you're talking about. And that's why we need to store that in the database. And that's what this wants. That's what this needs in order to display it. On default, let's make this video ID the current page courses lessons first items ID. Let's see what this looks like. Here we have the introduction, and that's exactly what's populated here. This is a little bit odd sizing. Let's make this longer so we can see it a little better. But introduction was the first video, and that's what we see here, and it's playing accordingly. But we want to be able to toggle through the videos and also be able to see exactly which lesson we're on. So let's add some functionality over here. To start, I'm going to say when oops, let's say when current cells index is one, when it's the first item, this text, this font color is actually going to be blue. You can make this anything. You can make it that it's highlighted. You can make it that it's bolded. But as you can see on default, this is blue and this is over here. And it looks good accordingly. But this doesn't make it easy for us to change 
true. And in fact, if we're using a condition like the current cells index is one, how are we going to make a change accordingly? What we actually need to do is a little more complicated than that. Here in this video, we set the video ID to be so. But actually, we need to take a step back and on this group A, give it of type video. And say the data source is the current page courses, lessons, first item. Then over here for video ID, we just want to say it's parent group's videos ID. Let's try this out. This does the exact same thing. Now over here, instead of using a bogus condition like this, we can say when, what is this group called? Group video, when group videos, video is current cells video. Then we can make the font color, oops, then we can make the font color our blue and we can make the font weight bold. Let's try this out. Perfect, it does exactly what we want and it sets it up so that we're gonna be able to change the lesson we're on quite easily. Let me show you how. On this text, I'm gonna click it again and add a workflow. When this text is clicked, we're gonna do a number of things. First, we're gonna to go to element actions and click display data. We're gonna choose group video and just display current cells video in our group video. Let's try this out. I'm gonna click step by step. By default, our group videos video is going to be this introduction, the first item. But now when I go ahead and click another one, it's going to send its video, which is visual element to our group. And we see it change. We can do the same with group three. We see this become bold and go back to group one. Perfect. One thing I realized that I forgot to mention is on this repeating group, when we choose current pages lessons, we actually want to add a sorted and make sure it's sorted by the order. And click no for descending. This is going to set it up in the same way. But in case your things weren't added into the database in the correct order, that's going to account for that. Okay, now we made it so that we can change this and change the video accordingly. The last thing I want to do is set up functionality to see if this lesson has been viewed. To do this, first we need to have some sort of icon to show whether it's been viewed or not. I'm just going to add a check. You can add whatever you want. Now, instead of stacking these, I'm going to go to a repeating group and make it a row and like so. So it looks a little nicer. Now, when I load this, oops, when I load this, all of these check marks are seen by default, but we want to only make it true when the users watch the video. Remember the little spiel I gave at the beginning of this video? We set this up to include watched as a list of users, and the video is watched when our user is in this list of users. That's the only thing we need to do to this check mark. We just need to say when current cells videos watched contains current user, then this element is visible. Otherwise, this element is not. Seems simple enough, but we want to see if the user has viewed this lesson. And by default, they're on the introduction, which means that they viewed the introduction. Likewise, when I click to style variables, I've now viewed this. How do I make our watched reflect that? Because right now we have no workflows actually changing this list of users. We want to say that when this video is current cells video is clicked, in addition to displaying the data, we want to make changes to our current video. And we want watch to include our current user. Let's preview this, and we see that when we click to visual elements, this now changes to watched. Likewise, when we go to style variables, it's watched as well. And likewise, we can go back to introduction and do that as well. 
this becomes a little bit awkward when you start on introduction but it's not watched right off the bat but you can change that by either making the introduction watched on default or not starting with introduction and having a separate welcome page from there i encourage you to be a little creative try things out and let me know in the comments below what your preference would be for determining if the introduction is watched or not by default thank you so much for your time i hope this was helpful and i hope you can add what you learned today to your applications.